Welcome to our lecture online. Now here's a problem that you can do in just a few seconds. It's a, it's a problem dealing with the centripetal force and how much something weighs at the pole and how much something weighs at the equator, the same object at the equator. So it says here, a body weighs 49 newtons on a spring balance at the North Pole. What will be its weight recorded on the same weighing machine if it's shifted to the equator? And they give us some information. They tell us that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second square and that the Earth's radius is 6,400 kilometers. So let me make a diagram of what they're talking about. So let's say we have the Earth right here. It's rotating about its axis. And if we put something at the North Pole, like a person at the North Pole would have a weight mg at the pole. I'll write so p. And over here, the person at the equator, the same person, would weigh something differently. And let's say that would be mg at the, um, at the equator. All right. So why would those two be different? Well, notice at the pole, you're not affected by the rotational motion of the Earth. And it's just, you're simply attracted to the center of the Earth. And the force of attraction, the force of gravity, is simply equal to g little m big m divided by the distance squared where r is simply the distance between you and the center of the earth like so but at the equator you're rotating and because of that part of the force required to pull you towards the earth is caused by the centripetal motion now that's kind of a hard thing to visualize but if you think about, for example, when you're going around a circular path at a very high speed, you tend to feel that fictitious force pushing outward. So that means that it feels as if something is pulling you to the side when you're rotating really fast. And so that means that the force of attraction in this direction is actually going to be less than it is over here because of that centripetal motion. Because of that, the answer is going to have to be less at the equator compared to the North Pole. And when you look at the answer, there's only one answer that is less, that's answer D, which is the correct answer. So you don't even have to calculate anything, you just have to realize at the equator you weigh less because you're going around the circle, which appears that there's this fictitious force pulling outward. You subtract that from this, this is of course mv squared over r, v would be the rotational motion of the Earth. You subtract that from the centripetal force, f sub c, and you get the answer less than 49 newtons. Another way to look at this problem is to realize that the acceleration due to gravity at the pole is equal to 9.81 meter per second square. And the gravitational attraction at the equator is equal to 9.78 meters per second square. So by this alone, you realize you're way less at the equator relative to the pole if you are familiar with those two numbers. Then you can see that the difference between the two is equal to 0.3%. So essentially, you weigh about 0.3% less at the equator than you do at the pole. Now, what is 0.3% of 49 newtons? So 0.3% of 49 newtons is approximately equal to 0.15 newtons. And then means if you subtract 0.15 newtons for 49 newtons, so if you take 49 newtons and subtract 0.15 newtons, you get 48.85 newtons. And since it's just, of course, an approximate calculation, you can see that you end up very, very closely to the correct answer, D. If all else fails and you need to calculate what that is, then you can simply say, well, mv squared over r is equal to question mark. What is that reduction in weight due to being at the equator? And of course, it would be equal to this, mv squared over r. Okay, the mass, that would be uh, the mass of u. So we have m is equal to mg divided by g. So in this case, since we know what mg is, it's 49 newtons, and g is, let's say, 10 meters per second squared, because we're going to simplify things, then we can simply write m as mg divided by g times v squared. Now v, what would be the velocity of the Earth? Well, v is equal to distance divided by time, which is 2 pi r 
the radius of the Earth, R times 2 pi, which is the circumference of the Earth, divided by the, the time of an entire day, that would be equal to uh, roughly 86,400 seconds, because that's the, the day in terms of seconds, and that would then go in here. So we get 2 pi times the radius squared divided by the period squared, which is 86,400 squared, and uh, then we divide that by the radius r. So we end up with mg over g. So this would be equal to 49 divided by 10. Let's call it 50 divided by 10 to make it easy. So 50 divided by 10. Then we get 2 pi squared. Now 2 pi is about 6. Square that, you get 36. Uh, make it 40. So 40. And then we have r squared over r. So that simplifies like that. And then 86,400 is about 100,000, and we want to square that. And instead of R, we can write 6,400 with three more zeros because we have to convert that to meters. So, all that said, we now have 2,000 divided by 10, which is about 200. We have 6,400 6, times 200. So what we could do is we can multiply this times 6, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and divide the whole thing by, this is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros to the 10th power, that's 10 to the 5th power squared, that would be 10 to the 10th power. And notice that 2 times 64, that's about 100, with 2 more zeros, so that would be equal to 100 with five zeros, one, two, three, four, five, with two more zeros, one, two, all divided by 10 to the 10th. And notice that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right, two, four, six, eight, nine zeros. So that would be about 0 0.1 Newton. So very roughly calculated, you would weigh about a tenth of a Newton less at the equator than you would do at the poles. And of course, you subtract a tenth from 49, you get 48.9 again, close to the number they have there and again you feel comfortable that you got the right answer but this is a lot of work that would take a long time it's not necessary if you simply realize that it has to be less because you're affected by the centripetal motion of the earth's rotation if you remember these two numbers you realize it's 0.3 percent less which is 0.15 newtons that checks out and here again you realize that it's less at the equator compared to the pole which is only one answer which is less and so in a matter of a few seconds, you can make your decision and move on to the next problem. But just to make sure that you could do a quick rough order of magnitude calculation to see if uh, the answer you get is reasonable or not. And it was, and therefore, that's the correct answer. It wasn't that quick. Well, you don't have to do all this. You can bypass all this and simply just look at that and go, it's got to be less because yeah, it's yeah, the equator. Oh, no, no, yeah, you're right. This is not a quick calculation. It's kind of a messy calculation.